Demolition work is standard operating procedure. It has been for generations. Demolitions can be used to remove an obstacle that the enemy has placed, or constructively in land clearing operations, ditching or cratering. Most of the demolition work accomplished in today's army is done by means of insensitive type explosives. In order to detonate them, you need a small explosive charge, powerful enough to set off the main charge. This smaller charge is the blasting cap. There are two types of cap. One type is non-electric. You use it with time fuse, which actually burns. The non-electric priming method is recommended for use in combat operations. It requires very little equipment. One man can carry the entire kit. You can use non-electric priming near high tension wires, radar stations, and radio transmitters. This is not recommended with the other type of priming, electric priming. Electrical priming requires more equipment too. But electrical priming is the method to use when you have several charges that have to go off simultaneously and you need positive control of the exact instant of detonation. Military explosives come in a wide variety of types and can be primed for a variety of jobs. This is a galvanometer which measures electrical resistance and continuity of circuit. You need it to test components in the electrical firing system Components such as the electric blasting cap, which as we noted before, detonates the explosive charge. Only the special silver chloride dry cell battery is used in the galvanometer. Another type may produce enough voltage to detonate the cap. The cap goes off when an electric current comes through the lead or leg wires. With the old type cap, the lead wires are accordion folded within the cap's container. Be sure that you use only one manufacturer through any one firing system if you have these old type caps. With the new type M6 blasting cap, the manufacturers are compatible and you can mix them up within a firing system. The lead wires of the M6 are wrapped around the outside of the container. The first thing you do is remove the cap from its cardboard tube. To extend the lead wires, wrap them around your hand twice, so you won't be pulling directly on the cap. Hold the tube with the wires running out between your fingers. Secure the cap so it can't hit anything hard. Then unreel the wire carefully. At the end of the lead wires is a shunt. This shorts the circuits and prevents any stray current from detonating the cap prematurely. Remove the shunt now. Here we use the galvanometer to check the cap, but check the galvanometer first by placing a piece of metal across the two terminals. If the galvanometer is working, the needle deflects. To test the cap, place the lead wires on the terminals. A reading means that you have a complete circuit. Now since you've taken off the shunt, twist the ends of the wires together. This shorts the circuit and prevents an accidental firing. The next component in an electric firing system is the firing wire. This is what lets you get far enough away so you won't blow yourself up with the target. Test the firing wire by closing one end and placing the other ends on the galvanometer terminals. This shows there's no break in the wire. To test for a short, open the closed end. You'll repeat these same two tests later after you've reeled the wire out. 
The final component in the electric firing system is the blasting machine, a small hand generator that supplies the current for the system. Blasting machines have either plunger handles or twist handles. In an actual system, the way you prime the charge depends on the type of charge you're using. If the cap well is threaded, you can secure the cap by using a priming adapter. Seat the cap's lead wires in the adapter. Place the cap in the well and screw in the adapter. But not all cap wells are threaded. If your charge has one that isn't, or if the well is threaded, but you don't have any adapters on hand, secure the cap with the lead wires, making two half hitches around the charge. Some explosive charges have no cap wells at all. But the container of the C4 plastic explosive does have threaded indentations, showing you where to punch your own cap well. Use your cap crimpers for this. Then proceed to prime the charge using an adapter if you have it, but two half hitches if you don't. If you're using less than a complete block of plastic explosive without its container, there's no way you can use an adapter. Here you punch the cap well directly into the plastic itself. Done properly, you'll have at least a half inch of plastic around the sides of the cap and an inch at the ends. Secure the cap with two half hitches. With military dynamite too, you have to punch your own cap well. Again, use the crimpers. There's no way you can fit an adapter to a dynamite stick. Secure the cap with two half hitches. This is the way you prime dynamite when you're putting only one stick in the borehole and you don't have to tap. If you were using two or more sticks in the hole, you'd want to avoid putting pressure directly onto the blasting cap. To accomplish this, use a side prime. When you get halfway in, change the direction of the punch to keep the hole as close as possible to the center of the stick. From there on, the procedure is exactly the same as with an end prime. Priming sheet explosive is a little different in that instead of punching a cap well, you cut a slot. There's no special trick to cutting it. Just make it the right size, large enough to accommodate the electric blasting cap with a snug fit. Even that snug fit, however, won't be enough to secure the cap. So place the piece cut from the slot over the cap and tape or tie the explosive and the lead wires to the target. You can also prime sheet explosive without cutting a slot by overlapping two sheets and placing the cap between them. Special charges, such as the Bangalore torpedo, are used for special situations, but the priming technique is essentially the same. The Bangalore has a threaded cap well, so use a priming adapter if you have it. If not, you'd secure the cap again with the two half hitches. The same thing applies to the shaped charge. Use the priming adapter if you have it. But if not, the charge's conical shape would get you into trouble if you try to use the two half hitches. So if you have no adapter, secure the cap by taping the lead wires. Cratering charges have cap wells located outside the cylinder. But placing the cap right on the charge like this is not the preferred way of priming. Since cratering charges are used underground, you get an added measure of safety and precision by using detonating cord. This is an explosive cord with enough power to detonate the charge. In addition to its cap well, the cratering charge also has a detonating cord tunnel. 
insert the detonating cord so that it protrudes beyond the tunnel. Then secure it with an overhand knot, leaving at least six inches below the knot. Any moisture that may have seeped into the cratering charge reduces its sensitivity, so you play safe by double priming it. In addition to the detonating cord, use a one pound block of TNT or its equivalent wrapped with four turns of detonating cord. Connect all your charges to a ring main. This too is made of detonating cord. You could put a blasting cap right on the ring main itself, but a better way of doing it is to attach the cap to a separate piece of detonating cord. Secure it by taping it to the detonating cord with a closed end pointed toward the charge. With this separate detonating assembly, you can wait until the last minute to actually arm the firing system. Then tie the cord assembly in with a square knot. You can now detonate all the charges tied into this one ring main with that single blasting cap. Notice that this row of crater holes is set up with two ring mains. This is a dual firing system. Each ring main is an independent system with its own blasting cap and its own power source. This greatly reduces the chance of a misfire. Multiple charges are more readily fired simultaneously in this manner with a ring main made of detonating cord and a single cap. But if you have no detonating cord, You've got to prime each charge individually with its own electric blasting cap. You do this in a common series. One lead wire of each cap is spliced to a lead wire of the adjacent cap. Again, the splice is made with a Western Union pigtail splice. This is the system usually used when your charges are arranged in a circular pattern. With such a pattern, the two end wires come out close together. It is a simple matter then to connect them to the firing wire and power source. When you have a linear pattern, such as a row of crater holes, you use the leapfrog method of connecting the wires. Skip a cap for each splice of the lead wires, then work your way back and connect the ones you skipped. After you finish, inspect the entire circuit to recheck and be sure that all the caps are tied into the circuit. In demolition work, the NCO in charge is really in charge. He has complete control of the entire operation. The blasting machine never leaves his side. After you've checked to see that your series is properly set up, check the circuit with the galvanometer. With a complete circuit, you should have a reading. No meter reading indicates a broken circuit, and you must then check each splice to see where the trouble is. Put the end lead wire of the first cap on one of the galvanometer terminals. On the other terminal, place the first splice, the splice involving that same first cap. If you get a reading, the cap is all right. Check the second cap the same way. Use the end lead wire again and the second splice. Checking this way, splice by splice, sooner or later you'll reach one that produces no reading. Something has gone wrong with that cap or with its lead wires. With an underground cap, you don't attempt to repair or replace it. What you do is dig to within a foot of the charge that has the faulty cap. Use your hand or a stick, nothing metallic. Place a primed two pound charge a foot from the charge with a bad cap and splice the leg wires from this two pound primer into the firing system. Check the circuit again 
and if it's all right, tie the system into the firing wire. Connect each of the end lead wires to a strand of the firing wire using a Western Union pigtail splice. On multiple charges, you do this now. With a single charge, you'd have spliced the cap to the firing wire even before you primed the charge. Protect the splice by taping it or using some other waterproof protection. Protect all the splices in the system this way. The firing wire, of course, will lead from the charge to your covered position. If you need a splice along the way, use the Western Union pigtail again. Then make a 10-inch loop with an overhand knot. This will prevent any direct pull on the splice itself and will be well worth the time it takes to accomplish. Don't ever exceed the rated capacity of the blasting machine. Never attempt to fire more than 10 caps with a 10 cap machine. If you have a larger series, use a 50 cap machine. The 10 cap blasting machine has a metal body. If that's the one you're using, be sure that the firing wire touches the terminals only, not the metal of the machine's case. With single and multiple charges both, this connection of firing wire to blasting machine is always the last step in setting up the system. But you're still not ready to blast. First, check the area in all directions, just in case there may be any men you missed seeing. Then yell, fire in the hole three times, or sound the siren. You're ready now to insert the handle into the blasting machine and fire. This is what happens when everything works exactly right. But any firing system is subject to mechanical failure or human error. There's a chance that you may not have twisted the blasting machine handle a full revolution or pushed the plunger all the way in. Try it once more. If the charges still don't fire, disconnect the firing wire from the blasting machine and recheck the circuit with a galvanometer. If the circuit tests out as faulty, you'll simply look for the brake and repair it. But if there is a complete circuit, then the fault must lie elsewhere. It might be in the blasting machine. Try another machine. You'll either get a detonation or you'll know that the trouble was not in the blasting machine. Disconnect the firing wire and twist its strands together to short out the circuit. Inspect the entire length of the firing wire for bare spots or anything else that might be causing a short. Give particular attention to the splices. Inspect each and every one carefully. Inspect the connection of firing wire to circuit, a good likely place for a short to occur. When you've located and repaired the short, disconnect the firing wire from the circuit and again test the firing wire for a break. Remember to leave the other end closed for this. This test procedure must be performed even when a short is not detected. Now retest for a short by opening the standing ends of the firing wire. Even though the firing wire checks out, don't assume that the entire system is all right. Recheck the circuit too. It may be just one of those days. Go around splice by splice as before. You can inspect above ground charges immediately after a misfire. With below ground charges, you'd wait 30 minutes. Once you've found the trouble, 
correct it. Just because you found one break, don't stop there. After you fixed it, continue checking until you've gone around the entire circuit. Put back all the other connections that you took apart and try it again. With an underground misfire, the checking procedure is exactly the same as we saw earlier, when we discovered the break before we attempted to fire. Remember, though, that with an underground misfire, you wait 30 minutes before investigating. Then check the circuit splice by splice until you find the break. And as before, place a two pound prime charge a foot away from the misfire. Splice this into the system and proceed normally. Demolition has been of vital importance in past wars and will continue to be in any future conflict. Skillful demolition work is necessary for the success of any army in the field. Always remember, that skill depends upon the man.